Taking on a single zombie? Easy peasy nipples greasy. Dealing with a group of five? Why not? Combat with ten zombies? Tiring, but sure, it's manageable. But once you're staring down 20 or more undead cannibals, mm -hmm. that's when your balls are going to start sweating. <laughs> I'm in danger! It is generally believed that hordes in Project Zomboid have always been the ultimate threat in the game. But after dozens of hours of playtime, you start to think to yourself, are they really? At first, hordes in Project Zomboid are genuinely terrifying for newcomers. However, as you actually start getting good at the game, a large group of zombies transforms from a real threat into an inconvenient nuisance. Not because you can't obliterate them, you absolutely can. It's just that it becomes such a tedious task, taking up valuable time and resources. That is why in this video, I'm going to show you the different ways of dealing with hordes and how to safely engage them. From eliminating them strategically to a straight-up cheese tactic of destroying a large group of zombies. So that by the end of the video, you will also realize that hordes aren't actually that big of a threat. The first way you can deal with hordes is by using a method I call thinning the herd. This is quite a simple idea, but also extremely effective. When you come across an area with plenty of zombies, try to lure only a few that you can confidently handle at one time. Once they are following you, lead them a safe distance away from the main herd so that you can eliminate them without the rest getting alerted. Keep doing this repeatedly, and as the name suggests, you will slowly thin out the herd until they are all completely eliminated. Admittedly, this method can take some time, depending on how large the horde is. So it would be advisable for you to set up a nearby camp where you can go to rest and store your supplies. This method is reasonably safe as long as you're careful and not attract more zombies than you can handle at once. It is also efficient since you can easily manage your stamina and it is very productive since you will be increasing your combat skills in the process. Now let's move on to the second method, which most people know as fence fighting. When a zombie climbs over a fence, they will fall to the ground for a brief moment. Use this moment to bash their head in, since this usually one-shots them. When doing this against a horde, bash as many of their skulls as you can before the others start getting up. Once they're all over the fence, climb over to the other side again, so that they will follow you and fall down again. Just rinse and repeat until you've successfully disposed of the entire horde. However, there is one thing that you should be weary about, which is the lunging zombie. Sometimes when a zombie climbs over a fence, they will lunge at you and knock you back. So to counteract this, Make sure to stay a few feet away from where they fall and target the zombies that lunge at you instead. This method is moderately safe if you know what you're doing, but extremely risky for beginners as lunging zombies can stun you badly. So practice with a few zombies first before using it against a horde. Let's now move on to the third method, which is what I call run and gun. Guns are extremely loud and attract zombies over a large area. So when you use one to clear hordes, it effectively lures all the zombies in the vicinity towards you, making it convenient to shoot them as a large group. Because when you shoot at zombies, it is better if they are all clumped together so that you are guaranteed to hit something. Using shotguns, in particular, is absolutely effective when clearing hordes because of their bullet spread, which allows you to hit multiple zombies at once and gain more XP. However, this method is much better used in the mid to late game because it requires you to have guns and lots of ammunition. If you aren't using a shotgun, you will need to have a good aiming level in order to be effective with any other firearm. 
Otherwise, you'll be missing more shots than you will hit. Run and gun is probably the most fun method in the late game. But now, let's move on to the next method. This one is much easier since you won't have to do much, but it is also arguably the most destructive. Not only to the Horde, but to everything else in the world. It is what I call Molotov Mayhem. Undoubtedly, one of the most destructive elements in this game is fire. If you've ever tried leaving the stove on for too long, you would know how quickly fire can turn everything, including zombies, into ash. You can easily burn a horde by throwing a Molotov cocktail at them, or by simply luring them over a campfire. Once you've managed to start a fire within a horde, the flames will slowly spread to the other zombies that get in contact with the burning ones. And if you want to rapidly spread the fire amongst the horde, try to clump them together by running circles around them, making them touch each other skin to skin, accelerating the spread of fire. Before you attempt this method, I want to emphasize just how dangerous fire can be. It can burn entire neighborhoods and forests if even just a single fire starts. And it will disintegrate everything in your inventory if you die by the flames. So I wouldn't recommend doing this when you don't have to. This method is quite destructive and dangerous, but when you take the proper precautions, it can save you so much time and effort. However, it is my personal opinion that people who use this method are absolute pussy bitches who are too afraid to get into actual combat and want an easy way out. This method is too easy and too dirty that I would rather fight hordes with my bare hands than use this flaming method. But to each their own. Fucking pussy. The next method is the complete opposite of Molotov Mayhem because it is the least destructive and the safest method by far. This is a technique that I've talked about a million times in the past, back when I still had a sore throat, which is why I sounded differently in those videos. A few days ago, my wife left me and took the kids. The method that I'm talking about is something I call the moaning salvation. Essentially, this technique involves luring all of the zombies away from an area to somewhere far away where they will no longer disturb you. You first go to a place with plenty of zombies and start shouting to herd all of them together. After you've attracted all of the zombies in the area, you should then lead them to a location of your choosing. When you think that the location is already safely far enough, you can lose the horde by simply running away, losing them through a dense forest, or by just jumping over a large fence. It is most useful in the early game when you don't have the resources to fight yet. This is the method I always use, and it has consistently proven to be the most convenient technique I know. And even though it is simple, it still requires a lot of effort to pull off and takes practice to master, unlike the putty fire method. So now, we are finally at the finish line. But before we talk about the last technique, let me remind you that if you don't click the like button, there is a possibility that your wife will take the kids and leave you. But anyway, let me briefly talk about some honorable mentions, such as the normal method, the door method, and the chain fence method. These are the methods that some people might use, but I hesitate to add them to the list, aside from being honorable mentions, because they can only be used in specific scenarios with lots of setup or they are just simply inferior to the other methods I've already talked about. Please do let me know in the comments if I've left anything out. The normal method is the basic approach to fighting. It is when you swing at zombies as you're backpedaling and you run back to create some distance before you swing again, repeating the process. This is perhaps the most common fighting style that everyone uses, but it's very high risk and energy inefficient especially in the early game, when your nimble and damage levels are still low. Ironically, this method is the one I've used the most throughout my time playing this game, but it is also mostly the reason why I've died so much. That is why it's often smarter to instead use the thinning the herd method discussed earlier. 
The door method is something I came across in the comments section of one of my videos. Essentially, it involves facing multiple zombies outside a door and letting in only one by swiftly opening and closing the door. This allows you to deal with one zombie at a time while keeping the rest outside. It might prove useful when facing a few zombies, but a horde can easily break down a door in seconds. There's little room for error, as failing to open and close the door fast enough can be disastrous. Using the fence fighting method instead would be the smarter choice. The last honorable mention is perhaps one of the most relaxed methods, the chain fence method. Here, you simply stab zombies through a chain fence with a spear or bladed weapon. It's straightforward and easy, but you need to find a chain fence to work with. This limits its applicability to certain situations. Moreover, spears have low durability, so you'd need to craft many of them to clear a large number of zombies. So without a chain fence, you should instead just opt for the thinning the herd method or fence fighting method. That's it for the honorable mentions, so let's now delve into the cheese tactic I mentioned earlier in the video. Let's simply refer to this technique as the car cheese. Many of you have likely attempted to mow down groups of zombies with your vehicle. While this approach often gets the job done, it comes at the cost of damaging your car and the risk of getting stuck if there are too many zombies. Each time you hit a zombie, the car slows down and hitting numerous zombies can bring it to a halt. This is highly inefficient since it only eliminates a few zombies per hit. So instead of the typical back and forth method, you should utilize your car to spin in reverse and have it act as a Beyblade. Although this still damages your car and carries the risk of it shutting off, you can mitigate these risks by constantly monitoring your engine condition to know when it is time to stop. What sets this method apart from the usual back and forth approach is that it allows the car to run continuously without pausing, resulting in the elimination of zombies at a much faster rate. This tactic is considered a cheese method because it's remarkably easy and dispatches zombies rapidly, with minimal danger as long as you monitor your engine status. Furthermore, zombies cannot attack you even if your window is broken because the car never stops moving, denying them the opportunity to strike. And if you choose the burglar profession, you can utilize this technique to clear entire hordes from the moment you spawn. Interestingly, although I consider this method more of a cheese tactic than Molotov mayhem, I still hold a greater disdain for the fire method. So please never use that method. It is so get. If you decide to employ any of these methods, don't forget to give this video a like, as I invented all of these techniques back in the 90s, when I used them against children. If you don't like the new voice, sorry bitch, you'll have to get used to it. These two are my only loyal Patreon supporters that have stayed since the beginning. Both of you are solely responsible for feeding me every month by collectively providing me with the monthly $4. I love you. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.